Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family. It is March, or I'm sorry, April 4th, uh, Tuesday morning. What a glorious morning it is. I don't know if you can see the mountain back there, but what's that Willie Nelson song? Um, on the road again. On the road again. Here's the stripe. We're on the Appalachian Trail. Again, Neil Gap going through going through uh, mountain crossings. It's the only covered place on the whole Appalachian Trail. We just went through it. So we spent the night, at, actually two nights, at Blood Mountain Cabins. And by the way, I highly uh, recommend those cabins. If you don't make reservations and you're through hiking, they'll give you a rate, a special rate. Um, anyhow... Uh, first come, first serve. Yeah, it's first come, first serve, and they do your laundry for free. Anyway, uh, hey, I'm filming. You want to do this, you get your own camera. <laughs> Keep your woman straight. You got to yell at him a little bit, especially early in the morning. It's like 8.15. Uh, again, Tuesday morning, we are, we are climbing out of, uh, out of Neil Gap, headed up the hill. So there's some people camped up here, so I'm going to be quiet. Uh, Anyway, beautiful day. Huge thunderstorms yesterday. By the way, the tornadoes that went through um, were south of us. We're fine, but we are expecting some weather tomorrow. It's going to get chilly Thursday and Friday, uh, I think. But anyway, having the time of our lives. Come on, let's do it. All right, I hope that you can see the, the view off here behind me. Um, this is amazing. We've climbed up out of, uh, out of Neil Gap. And that's quite a climb, and I, we're at the top now. <laughs> um, quite, whoa, quite a climb. Um, coming up out of there, and anyway, um, beautiful spot up here on top. So it's, uh, anyway, um, I didn't mention my new footwear. So I've been hiking in some Keen Oak Ridge um, shoes, and I think I've mentioned a couple times the top of my right foot has been like bruised or something from the uh, laced my shoes down too tight and all the repetitive bending and everything else um, has caused like a bruise and so that's really really been painful and even on our zero day yesterday uh, it was really hurting and so I went up to mountain crossings and talked to them and ended up making a purchase of some oboes uh, these are oboes traverse is the model and 13 but they run real wide and sure enough they do and they feel amazing on my feet so far I mean the jury's still out I've only got a mile mile and a half but it's been pretty much all the terrain we've seen we've experienced already and so far they're doing great and my right I've loose, loosened up my laces and laced them differently opened up the area that's bruised and and uh, anyway so they're doing doing well I'll report back on how those are going but uh, while we were coming down Blood Mountain, I don't think I mentioned this the other day, we ran into a trail runner. Actually, we ran into her on the way up Blood Mountain. And then on the way down Blood Mountain, we ran into her again. And she was doing, she's a, a very accomplished trail runner, and she's doing what they call up and overs. And she was going to do four of them uh, two days ago when we were coming over blood um, four up and over so she was running up the mountain and then down the mountain around the bottom and then back up the mountain <laughs> over the top and down and around uh, amazing um, that people would do that for fun but I guess some people would say why in the world would you hike 2200 miles with 30 pounds on your back <laughs> anyway speaking of pack weight oh my goodness doing this without trekking poles is treacherous and it's wet, so I'm gonna have to put the camera away. But anyway, um, real quickly, while we were there at the cabin, we were able to really go through our gear and make some decisions, and both Teresa and I were able to get rid of a few more things and lighten up our pack even more. Um, I made some really uh, tough food choices also on what to carry with me. By the way, this is the terrain that we're going down. I don't know if you can tell, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty legit but anyway one of the best ways to save weight isn't necessarily to buy the craziest ultra light stuff I mean that helps but um, it's to leave some of the cliff bars out 
some of the cliff bars and pepperoni sticks and bags of oatmeal. Uh, I made some at home. But you know what? You had to heat up the water and it just takes time and, and mess and whatever anyway. So I, I made some choices and left some food out because to carry any extra food into a resupply is a sin. I mean, that's you just you're carrying all that weight for nothing. So um, make wise decisions on what you choose to carry. Anyway, this is pretty severe, so I'm going to use both poles. Um, enjoying the beautiful morning. We just met a, a young lady from Connecticut named Not Bad. And she section hiked 500 miles last year. And she's headed to Maine. Uh, we'll probably be on a similar schedule, so we may run into her again. Uh, if I do, I'll get the camera out and introduce you uh, to her. But anyway, um, enjoying the morning like crazy. It is gorgeous. I miss you guys at home. Uh, I wish you were here with me. But uh, I'm glad you're watching. So thanks. Thanks for coming along. All right. We're at the top of some mountain that we just got done climbing. <laughs> and wow, what a view. What a gorgeous day uh, today, Tuesday. Now tomorrow there's supposed to be some pretty severe storms coming in. So Teresa and I have been talking about what to do um, about those storms. And our plan is to, to push it pretty hard today, get past... I think it's called Low Gap Shelter, um, stealth camp somewhere, and then probably get up early, maybe before the storm comes, and try to get to our car, which is at Unicoi Gap. And then we've got the option of whatever, going to town and drying stuff out or waiting in town for the rest of the storm, whatever. Anyway, part of the fun of hiking the AT is strategizing what you're going to do. All right, this is the top of Cow Rock Mountain. Some friends, Kyle and... I guess his wife, I'm not sure who she is, but anyway, here's the view. Man, this is awesome. There's a whole bunch of folks up here enjoying the sunshine and the beautiful day. What do you think? Alright. We've we're kind of still coming down. Um, I've seen that spot in videos. The spot? Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of coming down off of uh, Cow, Rock, Cow Rock Mountain still. And I just wanted you to see. <laughs> you don't want to step off the trail um, to the right. She goes down quick. Anyway, um, but this is the trail. Right now there have been lots of switchbacks uh, going along here. So it's good on your knees, I guess, but boy, it takes, you know, a long time. You go back and forth and back and forth, but that's okay. Because sometimes there's not switchbacks and you kind of wish there were. And so anyway, it's all, it's all good. Boy, it's a gorgeous day. Uh, we just ran into Kyle uh, and his wife. I think I showed him back there on the top of, here's one, stepping down. <laughs> the wet stuff is what you got to watch. Because then it gets muddy and slippery. Um, anyway, hey, by the way, on these videos, um, be sure to comment below on the video, okay? Not the Facebook page. Um, that's harder for me to get to. But on the videos themselves, comment uh, whether you like seeing the trail, if you like seeing the, the scenic overlooks, if you want the videos longer or shorter, um, or if you uh, like, you know, hearing me, you know, thoughts from the trail, life lessons learned, or... Uh, or whatever just anyway comment below so we can communicate a little bit and I'll do my best to respond uh, to as many as I can look at how amazing Teresa got her trail name and so I'll have a big announcement about that and I've got a trail name so we'll We'll announce those in the future. Something to look forward to, something to tune in later for. But you know what, I better use both poles. There's a ton of rocks. Um, so, better put the camera away. Anyway, hope y'all are having a good one.
look, look guys, this is our first trail magic. It's lunchtime. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Tesna T Gap, I think is what it is. Oh, the girls. All right. Well, I'm going to film in a minute, so uh, more. Yay. God is so good. We came down the trail right there, and I said there was trail magic. This is our first trail magic. And here is the, let me show you real fast what all we've got. Lots of snacks and yummy, delicious food and drinks and, and water. And this is the man responsible. So why don't you tell us who you are and why you're doing this? My name is King Tut. I've been doing this uh, here at Chesney Gap for about 14 years now and also trail days. And I do it because I follow Christ and he said you're supposed to love God and love people. So I asked myself, how in the world can you love a hiker? So you can love a hiker by providing 15 gallons of water, tons of calories, encouragement, because some of them are pretty discouraged at this point. They do medical kind of things to help with ankles and knees and whatever it is to serve them. So that's what we do. Excellent. Nudge ministry is the name of the ministry because I'm supposed to nudge everybody. Everybody a little closer to Jesus, like. <laughs> wherever they may be at. Atheistic, agnostic, Buddhist, whatever. Very nice. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for doing this. God bless you guys. This has been wonderful. What a treat. It's right at 12 o'clock. One of the greatest things are these right... Oh, yeah. Yeah, say hi, guys. One of the greatest things are those right there. You can sit down and take a load off. I haven't sat in a real chair... <laughs> well, besides at Blood Mountain Cabins. All right, anyway, thanks again, guys. Are you doing stretches in the morning, too? Yeah. I'm going to show you what it's like climbing out of Stanacy or Stanacity, something like that gap. Wow. This is one of the toughest climbs of the whole trail right here. And then, of course, we're doing it on a full stomach from all the trail magic with nearly full bottles of water so we could drink all we want but wow plus I count on losing a quarter of a pound or or three-eighths of a pound at each meal and I didn't lose that down there because I didn't eat my lunch I ate their lunch so huh. pack feels heavy because it is legs feel heavy because they are Oh, here's a flat spot. By the way, my definition of flat has changed. Flat can include up to about a 20 degree angle. And that's still pretty flat. As long as it's fairly smooth. Um, anyway, man, this is still awesome. I mean, the weather's gorgeous. It's kind of hot, actually. It's supposed to get up to like mid-70s. And that's pretty hot for early in the spring. Um, anyway, I think our plans for tonight are to push past Low Gap Shelter, find a good stealth camping spot, hit the bed early, try to get up real early and get going and try to beat the majority of the storm. We got like maybe eight more, depending on how far we go tonight, eight more to get into our car and then Mother Reed, an angel sent from heaven above, my mother-in-law, has gotten us a room in Hiawassee back at the, back at the uh, Holiday Inn Express. So I think Jenny and Kelly and Hala, or Teresa and I, will uh, stay there t tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow during the day and tomorrow night to get out of that storm. They're calling for hail and possible tornadoes. And so I don't mind getting broken in on the storms. Hopefully. Hopefully you can see the mountains. You keep turning, because that view is incredible back there. Oh, yep. I mean, how far can you see out there? Oh, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I don't know either. 
I know that's Cow Rock Mountain across there, but anyway. Wow, you gotta earn <laughs> earn these. We we earned this one coming up that hill, boy. Alright. On to flat ground. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so life lessons learned from the trail. Everybody says when you're looking at what it takes to through hike the Appalachian Trail, and we can relate this to what it takes to um, live life, to go through life, but um, everybody says take care of your body because your body, namely your feet, knees, you know, ankles. Um, your lower, your lower body especially, um, are the only things that are going to get you to Maine or to the completion of your goal. So everybody says one of the first rules, Uncle Cy on the Duck Commander TV, Dynasty. Duck Dynasty, um, Uncle Cy says rule number one, it doesn't matter how many rules, they're all rule number one. So rule number one is take care of your body and we can accomplish that several ways, um, one of which is as you hike along to um, when you start to feel a pain, a twinge, um, whatever it may be, you stop. And if it's like a blister, you address it. You put some KT tape on it, you put some first aid ointment, you run a needle with thread, um, with first aid ointment on the thread, you run that through the blister to pop it and put medicine inside. You cover it with a KT tape or bandage, or some people use moleskin, but I hear it just falls right off. Um, anyway, whatever. You take care of the issue right away because nobody else is going to take care of it for you. And when you have to drop out of the trail because of an ailment, it's your fault. It's not anybody else's. It's not your hiking partner's or whatever. It's your fault for not listening to your body. And so life lesson learned is that, uh, boy, no matter what, I need to listen to my body. And I haven't done a very good job of that the last few days. Um, that right foot, top of it, has really bothered me. And uh, by the way, these new shoes are so far are excellent, excellent hiking shoes. Um, so far, I don't quite have 10 miles on them yet. Um, but anyway, so far, so jury's still way out on those. But anyway, um, haven't done a good job of listening to my body and so I need to take care of that right foot or it may cost me <laughs> some days or whatever so we had to stop back there it's felt very good all morning and I had to stop back there and take four ibuprofen um, because suddenly on pretty flat easy ground it just flared up and really hurt um, I mean hurt really bad all right, somehow the, the film got cut there, so I had some brilliant words, y'all. And they were cut, so I'm going to try and repeat. <laughs> anyway, my foot flared up out of nowhere, and, and I said it felt really good. It didn't. It felt pretty pretty good um, all morning. Very doable. Uh, anyway, so I stopped, took the 4-ibuprofen, and sat and rested for about five minutes. Got, um, uh, anyway... Took, took off and within about 15 minutes that ibuprofen had kicked in and wow I'm able to walk on it no problem ibuprofen is a wonderful thing always take it with food or milk if you're at home uh, or whatever don't ever take it on an empty stomach because it is hard on you um, anyway so I guess the you know the to, to finish up this whole life lessons learned from the trail uh, is you know you're responsible for you and if you have a need, if you have an issue, an ailment, whether it be physical, which like my mom and my mother-in-law, Mother Reed, uh, have had hips replaced, and mom's had knees uh, replaced. If, you know, you got a physical issue, you have to take care of it for your own health, but for your family's health, for your own well-being, so that you can live, live a full, happy life. Uh, complete and I don't know when I say happy don't ever hear me that like life's always happy but able to do what you want what you need to do anyway but you might have an emotional need or a spiritual need take life by by the horns and do something about it um, claim it get 
get help uh, with whatever the issue may be that you're struggling with. Uh, whatever your ailment may be, you need to do it for yourself and for your family, uh, for your loved ones, and uh, get out there and enjoy life. So anyway, um, I don't know. I think the last time when I said it, it was, it was way better. I have no idea what all I said, so there's the short version. Anyway, thanks for, for coming along. And, and, you know, I really mean that. You guys, I know time is, is short and life is busy. And so I really appreciate um, you guys following along and, and rooting for me and, and encouraging me and praying for me. Uh, keep it up because I need it. If you comment below and, and give me... Give all right, well, it's kind of a wrap-up for uh, day six. We there's, there's our tent, and we hiked 13 miles today, kind of not by accident, but it wasn't something we planned on doing. We just needed to make more distance so we could get ready to get to the car tomorrow before the big storm, the perfect storm hits. Uh, anyway, we got some hiking partners and friends here, so, yeah, say hi and who you are. Hi, uh, my name's uh, Jenny, and I guess now lipstick. Uh, <laughs> I guess Yay. that's going to stick. Um, <laughs> right on your uh, lips. Due to the fact of me having lipstick on my uh, lighter on accident. <laughs> uh, I'm Kelly. I'm Jenny's hiking partner. I do not have a fun name yet, unfortunately. I can see it coming in my future. Though. Yep. <laughs> yeah. well, we are grateful be... to these guys for adopting us yes. and giving us knowledge. Thank you so much. We, <laughs> our bear bags are great now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say hey to your folks or anybody? All right. Thanks for letting us do this. <laughs> They're doing well. So there's um, uh, Kelly's tent down there. And then here is Lipstick's tent right here. All right. Beautiful sunset. Thanks for coming along with us.